And according to Verity Lambert, I believe, even things like the Marie Celeste mystery and the great historical mysteries of the world were explained by Daleks. One of the most memorable aspects of the Dalek character, of course, was its steely, chilling voice. Now, the man responsible originally is with us. He's Peter Hawkins, an actor best known for his voice. It's been heard on many an advert and on several puppet shows on children's TV, including the voices of Bill and Ben, the flowerpot men, whose oddle poddle language Peter devised himself. A bit of a leap of the, from, of the imagination from the flowerpot men to the Daleks, isn't it? It is, yeah. So how did it come about that you started off to do the voice in the first place? Well, I'd done so many... Um voices up until that time, that, that was uh, one version. The other version was that somebody phoned up uh, bookings and said, we want somebody who's good at dialects. And they thought they said dialects. <laughs> dialects. <laughs> so that's how you got the job. Yeah. Brilliant. But you weren't actually inside them, were you? Because originally no. they were only about four foot tall, weren't they? Yeah, I was behind the cyclorama uh, with a, a monitor and a lip mic and a pair of cans, earphones uh, with the director on one and the floor so that I could hear what was happening on the floor and the actors and everything on the other one. What electronic gadgetry was used? A ring modulator. What's that? Well, I don't know much about electronics, <laughs> but it did break up the voice a bit. But oh, we still we did it any. ourselves, of course. We, we still uh, grated it and... Uh, what, shall I do a bit? A burst? Go on. Hello, Debbie. Look You're at me when him. I'm talking to you, or you'll be exterminated, exterminated, exterminated! Of course, they didn't display that much emotion, except the voices did rise. They rose And they got pitch. excited. Yeah, and, and they got quicker as well. What characters did you have? Characters? Dalek characters. Oh, well, they all looked the same. So when I was doing about three on one occasion, or four, I got them to do them at different pitches, you see. So, Mum was down there very low, and the next mum was there. <laughs> And there was a terribly high one like that. <laughs> Sounds Not a bit that like Norman from, Wisdom, isn't it? <laughs> Not that different from the flower pot men either. No, except you could understand what they were saying. And was, were they all you all the time? And what no, I had David Graham with me quite a lot of the time. Uh, but I went to rehearsals and uh, then David usually came in on the, on the Saturday and I sort of genned him up as to what was happening. It was rather difficult once we uh, saw them on a monitor because when we were rehearsing, they didn't have their tops on. <laughs> so you could see the boys, sorry, <laughs> you could see the boys inside, you see. But when you were behind and, and looking at a monitor, of course, and they were cutting very quickly, uh, mm. you never really knew which was which because they all looked the same. So on rehearsal day, it was rather important to get it all sorted out very quickly. And I bet you've had a few reminiscences today. Thanks for joining us. I have us. indeed. <laughs> Sharma.